think it struck such a great balance of a lot of the things that we were working on. So it's, it has a sense of being lifted, of being classical in its language, but also very accessible to an audience that's maybe not very familiar with Greek tragedy and also just accessible to us in the present day. Like it, it's language we can really get uh, our hands around. And then also it seemed a bit unconcerned with gender in a way that other translations were very concerned. Like when we were looking at this idea of a female creon and what it might mean to change pronouns and to change proper, you know, uncle for aunt or things like that, that this translation is really concerned with justice uh, and was not really dwelling in, in ideas of gender as much as, as perhaps some other translations. And then also I'll say, uh, because Emily developed this work with the 10,000 Things Company and because their work is all company held, the ideas that we were exploring around each individual member of society having really strong role in these outcomes and in what happens to these characters, it felt like this version really served us as an ensemble. Yeah, and I loved that Emily Mann's version um, starts with Creon, right? Like, in, I think in most other adaptations, you start with uh, Antigone uh, trying to get her sister to go bury the body. Um, and this one starts with Creon. And so that was really exciting. And then I think the other thing that you really brought forward was that the chorus in Emily Mann's translation seemed to be much more active and they weren't monolithic, right? Yeah. That they were, they were more um, a, a group of citizens saying, what's going on here? Wait, I think this, I think this, I think, what are we gonna do? And I think that dialogue was so uh, exciting. 